Hello everyone, Eladin Bar, CEO of Robot Lab here. And today we are early May 2020. And there is a lot of uh, fear and confusion going on out there. Uh, we are all worried for you know, our own health, our families, our uh, parents, kids, uh, our friends. Um, a lot of uh, questions and unknowns about uh, you know, what's going to happen, how schools are going to open, how are we going to allow you know, uh, kids you know, come together in a school environment um, and many unknowns, many uh, things are basically not uh, clear. And uh, what I want to share with you today is uh, a framework that uh, was put together by uh, UNICEF, the United Nations Agency for uh, Child Protection. And uh, they created a framework that uh, I believe will be used in most of the schools, if not all of the schools, to ensure that we are all ready and we are all prepared to open our gates uh, without uh, restarting, you know, epidemic, pandemic, or whatever you want. Um, the important thing here is that fear and confusion uh, is like you know, blossoming when we don't know what to do. And this framework is designed to help us understand where we are and how we are going to open our school. Uh, the most important thing here is a systematic approach. We, it, it's not like a, a hit and run. It's not like a you know one uh, you know kind of like patch that you know okay we check our uh, checkbox and and we're done with that. This is not how it's going to work. It has to be systematic. It has to op to operate all the time. This method, this system, uh, in order to ensure that we keep our students, our families, our communities safe uh, as we go forward. So the framework that the United uh, Nations Agency created, the UNICEF, uh, consists of three steps, three different steps. The first step is uh, identify, make sure that you identify sick people or people that don't uh, you know, obey the rules um, and from, from getting into our community. The second step is educate, make sure that the message is being repeated over and over again and people, students in this case, uh, are following the instructions. And the third step is um, disinfect, not just clean, disinfect. These are the three steps. Now, how does it work? The first step in uh, identify, we want to make sure that we uh, keep our community safe from, uh, from germs, from viruses, from bacteria that um, you know, may come in. Uh, and to do that, we need to identify people that are sick. We don't want sick people coming into our community. So uh, we have to make sure that um, we uh, have some kind of solution, and I'll talk about our solution in a second, um, to make sure that um, uh, people that are uh, with fever don't come in. Uh, people that don't wear face masks, it's gonna be mandatory probably uh, when we open, reopen schools. Uh, face, uh, people without face masks uh, are not coming in. Uh, or people that develop fever during the day, or people that you know remove the uh, mask in, in public um, uh, during the day will be um, alerted, and either them or uh, a staff member. And by the way, it's not just for students, uh, parents, uh, you know, staff members, uh, you know, educators. Everyone can get sick. We are all human beings, uh, and as such, it's important that uh, we'll have a system that is uh, equivalent to everyone, and everyone has to go through that through the main gate, through the main door, and make sure that uh, everyone that comes into the community, to the school, uh, is actually uh, safe to be within uh, the school. The second step, uh, educate. We have to educate um, people about, uh, you know, hygiene, the good hygiene. And it's really, really hard. We all know, yes, we need to wash hands with soap. Yes, use disinfectant, you know, uh, uh, wipes or, or the spray or, you know, the gel or whatnot. But to be honest with ourselves, okay, how many times you washed your hands for 20 seconds? That's what the recommendation is. Okay, take soap and wash your hands for 20 seconds, okay? All around it. It's so hard. I can't do it. And it's like I'm I'm you know struggling with it, you know, with, with myself and my kids. I'm teaching my kids to sing happy birthday twice. 
Okay, that's how long, 20 seconds last uh, while they're wash their hands. So they're saying happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear daddy. And then they do it again. This is 20 seconds. It's a lot, a lot of time. It's probably 10 times more than the typical uh, time that it takes us to wash hands. So we have to make sure that we, uh, you know, keep that and, and we practice that with our students. So it's not just like a, you know, a poster that you put by the, um, by the you know, bathroom door and just uh, uh, wash your uh, hands for 20 seconds. It doesn't mean anything. Students need to practice and by practicing that, they'll get uh, used to that and, and, you know, basically do that. Um, another thing is, uh, you know, we need to practice uh, sneezing to, the, uh, to our elbow, not just, uh, you know, all over the place. Don't sneeze into our hands. Don't wipe uh, your hands with like a, uh, you know, regular tissue and, and shove it back to your pocket. This is not good hygiene. And again, these are things that we all do in a normal, you know, course of life. But, you know, now when we have uh, uh, such a high infectious virus, we have to change the way that we, uh, we do things if we want to keep our community and our environment safe. So that's the second step. The third step is disinfect. We are not talking about vacuum cleaning or um, you know, spraying some disinfectant um, you know, in the corridor at the end of the day. We have to treat that systematically and we have to do that every single day. We need to make sure that we don't start a new day with yesterday's germs and viruses and bacteria. We have to make sure that every day we start fresh. So whatever happened yesterday, we won't drag along uh, to the next day. We have to disinfect, especially high, um, high touch areas, um, all the door handles, all the, um, you know, the classroom area that, you know, everyone is like uh, going through lockers, uh, these kind of things. Um, and we have to use technologies that are proven for that. Um, you know, uh, the janitor at the end of the day um, is doing amazing job, but uh, it's impossible to go and disinfect a whole class. Um, in a whole school in just you know a couple of hours that we allow them to work. Um, so to do that, uh, to basically comply with the three steps, uh, we created uh, a new kit, a new bundle uh, with three different robots that have the capabilities, uh, that have the capacity to do that. Uh, so for the first step, for the identify step, we have to make sure that we uh, detect uh, sick people at the entrance and, or people that don't wear masks. For that, we have uh, a robot that is equipped with infrared uh, thermal camera. And, and this camera can measure up to 60 people uh, per minute as they go by. You don't need to take a picture and wait or whatever. People can just walk all the time. And whenever someone with a temperature higher than whatever uh, you know, the setting is, um, is, is, you know, in the frame, the system will alert uh, either a staff member or, the, you know, the robot can actually talk to, the, uh, to this person. Uh, the robot also has face detection and can identify humans that don't wear masks. So if it's mandatory to go into the school with a mask, uh, we have to alert either a staff member or the person itself, uh, hey, you're not wearing a mask, please, you know, uh, put your mask on. And if they don't, obviously we can, you know, send um, an alert to one of the staff, staff members to take care of that. Um, and this is uh, not just at the entrance uh, to the school. This has to go around the day. So during the day, this robot can patrol, uh, you know, during recession or, uh, you know, whenever, during lunchtime. Uh, the robot can patrol around, can look around and, and monitor because we can develop fever during the day. It doesn't you know, I have to be only overnight and when we arrive to school in the morning. We can uh, get sick later. Uh, we can drop our masks later. Um, and it's important to keep uh, reinforcing that and identifying problems when they are very, very small and don't let them spread and don't let them uh, become big. So that's the first robot, the first step. For the second step, educate, we have another robot that is humanoid robot that is very, very, um, easy to work with and, and, and we, we can personalize this robot. And by working with this robot, uh, students learn how to wash hands, how to sneeze to the, uh, to the elbow, what is good uh, hygiene, good practices for hygiene. Uh, the robot can, can actually practice with them, 20 seconds, that's a lot of time as, as I mentioned earlier. And we can practice that with the students, we can 
uh, give them uh, like a scorecard. I mean, how long are you doing that? Are you keep doing uh, what you should do for the duration that you should do? Um, and, you know, run all kinds of quizzes and, and make sure that students really, uh, you know, practice and embed and understand this, um, uh, you know, behavior change that we, we must embed in them. The third step uh, is a robot that um, can disinfect uh, the environment. It's using two technologies. One is UV light, ultraviolet light, in the C spectrum of uh, the UV. It's a, a very, very short wave uh, a spectrum of light, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, and the second um, a method is by spraying disinfectant to the area. Now, using UV and using disinfectant, it's, there is nothing new in that. Uh, we're, schools and, and uh, universities and, and hospitals are doing it for many, many years. Uh, but it was limited to just ER rooms or just a, a operations room or you know specific labs or maybe just a small box that we need to disinfect some uh, tools. Um, now we are talking about disinfecting our environment, our desks, our tables, our you know chairs, our doors, uh, our lockers, our you know uh, whiteboard or whatnot. And this is something uh, that needs some. You know, different uh, a paradigm shift. Uh, we can't just go and wipe everything with disinfectant. It's not going to work. Um, we can't just um, you know assume that a, a human can do that um, like in a couple of hours across all the classrooms, across all the school. Uh, it just it's not going to work. And not only that, uh, it's exposing uh, this human, uh, the janitor, to chemicals, to rough chemicals uh, that are not uh, healthy. And, and we. We sh humans should not do that. Uh, this is a job for robots, especially the UV one. We, we know that the uh, ultraviolet is not safe for humans. So uh, this robot can actually go uh, through uh, the school. It creates a map and we can create on the map uh, spots where we want the robot to uh, stop and to uh, disinfect. And by uh, stopping at these uh, spots, the robots turn on its um, UV light and blast the environment with this UV uh, light. Now, the ultraviolet uh, light basically penetrates the, uh, the, the uh, fat molecules around the, the viruses and, and the bacteria and basically uh, disrupt the uh, DNA and the RNA inside. This is how it works. And by doing that, uh, the robot basically, the, not the robot, sorry, the, the light, uh, the UV light, uh, basically breaks the, uh, the RNA apart and then the RNA can't interact with the human uh, DNA, with any human cells anymore. This is how the technology uh, works. And that's actually the same reason why it's not safe for humans. We don't want uh, a person to go with UV light and disinfect the whole uh, area because it's harmful for our body as well. So the way that uh, it works, uh, you set the map, uh, you, you teach the robot the map, you teach the robot about you know, the, the classrooms and everything. As long as the doors are open, the robot can go inside. It can navigate by itself. Um, it's, you know, uh, at the end of the day, evening, everyone is home. We keep the doors open and the robot wakes up based on schedule and starts disinfecting the, uh, the entire floor or the entire school. And it goes spot by spot based on the, uh, on the definition on the, on the map. Um, we can set it to spend more times in certain areas um, or uh, less time in, in other areas. We can turn on and off the, the disinfectant spray. We can turn on and off the UV light based on um, the requirements and based on the space. And this is, uh, think about uh, you know, elementary school classroom uh, as an example. It has a rug. Uh, students sit on that all day with their hands, with everything. Um, it has toys. It has books. It has... Uh, you know, different accessories in the classroom. No one, no person can actually go and wipe all of this, or we don't want uh, to get this uh, carpet wet from, from disinfectants, right? Uh, so we have to treat it in a, in a different way. We have to treat it systematically every single day. And this is where robots are perfect uh, because they can do it and do it over and over again and make sure that it's safe and clean uh, every single day. So this approach from UNICEF, uh, is designed uh, to work together as a whole. We have to, again, identify, educate, and disinfect. This is one uh, you know, strategy. Uh, 
And we have to work within each one of these uh, methods systematically and make sure that whatever we do works every single day over and over again, because you can't rely just on, on um, uh, identifying uh, sick people at the entrance uh, and not disinfect at the end of the day. You can't just disinfect and let uh, sick people go in. Uh, you can just educate and not do the rest. It's a combination of all three that will keep our environment and our schools healthy. Um, so this is in a high level. In the next uh, videos in this uh, chain, and you can uh, click down here um, to, to find the direct links to that, we'll talk about each one of these robots, exactly how it works, what it offers. So to conclude that, in order to face the fear and the uncertainty that we are in, we have to approach this challenge of going back to school in a systematic way. And UNICEF gave us the framework, and from Robot Lab, you can actually get the tools to implement the framework. When you have the framework, when you have the tools, there is no reason to be fearful anymore. We all know how schools can be one big petri dish, but with this type of technologies, with this type of implementation, we can make sure that schools are safe for everyone, for the students, for the teachers, for the community. I encourage you, contact us, call our office, send us an email, sales.robotlab.com, all the details again down in the description. We'll be more than happy to work with you and uh, provide you this uh, training and these uh, tools that will keep your community safe. Thank you and stay safe out there. Bye.